You know, anyone can make a video saying, I want to read all these series in 2023, but do you have the courage to put it in permanent ink? Here's a couple that I do. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back to talk a little 2023 is today, guys. We're beginning the end of the year content, which is, you know, kind of the end of the year and then kind of previewing early next year. And that kind of talks about what are in the plans for early next year. Now, everybody does videos about, you know, series I'd like to read in the, you know, the next year. And you do that really early. And then once it gets quite close to nut cutting time, you have to kind of finalize that. At least I do, because I like to work so far ahead on my schedule that I say, hey, what are some series that I'm actually going to be starting next year? no questions about it it's going to happen now i want to say these aren't just series i'm interested in like i said these are series that are without a doubt are going to be happening in 2023 now i'm not saying i'm going to finish all these series in 2023 what i'm saying is these are series that i'm going to begin in 2023 no question about it so i have put them on my tbr and in permanent ink and let's begin with those guys with the ones that i'm saying is in permanent ink it's going to happen no question about about it these are the for certain ones now beginning here we might seem like we're cheating a little bit because these are kind of technically in the same series with the first three but i need to talk about each individual one first up is going to be the tawny man by ms robin hobb i'm finishing up live ship as we speak i am in the very last chapters of that book and with this one i want to not do it all in a month like i have live ship this one i want to kind of do january february march kind of thing so my goal is to kind of be done with that series uh by the by this time next year be talking about the ending of the realm of the eldlings and that's why the next series is obviously the rain wild chronicles so as you see what i'm doing here it is kind of a cheat because like i said it is technically not technically it is part of the realm of the eldlings but the way that she structures her series they are individual uh you know trilogies or quartets and then of course the last one is going to be the fits and the full trilogy so i'll be finishing up realm of the eldlings in 2023 no question about it to make myself stay the course i have uh, scheduled that uh, that panel discussion system that we've got and philip chase and i are going to actually be reading the rest of these series after live ship together so that's quite a fun fun reading buddy i've got as i make my way through the world that Miss Hobb has created. So uh, those three, like I said, it is all just a realm of the elderlings, but I just want to say that they are each new series. So I'm going to count them. But here are the ones that are officially new series, beginning with Mike Shackles, The Last War. I have the first book uh, on Physical Wheel of the Dead. I have the other two on my Kindle. So if I do enjoy this first book, I can keep going as I desire. This is a series I don't know a ton about. Uh, my guy Petrick has said nothing but great things about it. The, the the brothers Gwen, Will and Ed have said really, really awesome things about it. They pretty much have said it is like the, you know, the heir apparent to the First Law trilogy, which I know those gentlemen would not be saying that lightly because I know they are big fans of First Law as I am. And Mike Shackle seems like a really, really awesome dude. So uh, I've, got, I've got the Gwen brothers and I've got Petrick telling me these are really, really great grimdark books. Then I think I'm going to take that advice with no questions about it. So this is when I kind of wanted to start this year and and then when I decided to go ahead and bump up around the Eldlings, I said, well, let's do this probably around the spring sometime in 2023. And that is the plans as of the moment. Looking forward to it. Next up, this is one that my guy slowly read. Mark has actually uh, recommended it to me a lot. That is The Lot Lands by Jonathan French. Now, this trilogy is actually completed. Uh, I, I was calling it the Bastard series because I think we got uh, with the Gray Bastards, the True Bastards, and the free bastards i'm not really sure so it's bastard the bastards trilogy but then everybody thinks you're talking about gentleman bastards so it is known as the lot lands uh this is a series i don't know a ton about i've heard it's kind of almost like a, a medieval fantasy version of sons of anarchy you know where they treat their their steeds as their you know their motorcycles and things so uh greatly influenced by sons of anarchy but kind of in a medieval fantasy setting sounds very very cool to me and obviously when you have you know not just 100% human uh, main characters. I think that's a, a neat idea because this is fantasy, guys. Let's uh, let's explore the the realm a little bit. Let's let's move around the uh, the uh, the planet and deal with some things that aren't just humans. Let's get fantastical with it. So that sounds like that could be a nice breath of fresh air. No idea about when in the year I'd be starting that, but uh, I, I do think that it'll be in probably I'd say early 2023 if I had to guess. Well, it just depends because we are going to be doing that Red Rising reread and, uh, you know, things like that. So that'll kind of uh, play into it a little bit. Uh, next one I don't have on physical. I have it on digital. This is the Arthurian Tales by uh, Giles Christian. This is an author that I read his 
what was it? The uh, Hell of uh, Hellmouth. Hellmouth was called a short story novella that was about you know just a real medieval horror. And I said I just want to give this author uh, another try. Patrick, again, knowing how much I loved Bernard Cornwell's Warlord Chronicles, I really think that you'd like his Arthurian series. So that'll be the one that I start. It's going to be a white uh, Lancelot, and then it's going to be. Uh, uh, Camelot, I believe, is what the second book is called. I believe there's going to be a third book we haven't actually written yet. But uh, that's actually going to be January and February because that is a read-along on my Discord server. So, guys, if you're interested in read-alongs, jump on the Discord because there's lots of them happening in 2023. A uh, good, a really great, great person on my uh, Discord server, Flitch, actually updates this read-along schedule all of the time. And there's something, a little something for everyone. And it's really one of those things, if you can get enough people together, we encourage you to do that. Lots of read-alongs that I'm not leading. There's lots of people who do ones that I don't even touch. Like they've been doing like for Kozigan for like the last year and it's going strong. So uh, it's one of those things, if you've got a lot of people that are interested in doing a series, jump on the Discord and we might be able to get that series going for you. Next up, I kind of talked about this one on my Thanksgiving tag. Uh, I am really, really excited to finally be dipping into the Song of the Shattered Sands by Mr. Bradley P. Uh, word I can't say. I believe it's Bogey. Someone always tells me I say it wrong. But uh, this series right here is one that has always been highly recommended to me and I was like oh, I want to finish a few other series before I begin it and it seems like every year I just kind of sweep it off to the next year so I feel like if I get it on this list this year it'll finally be happening uh, Jane on my discord as one of my moderators she's actually uh, planning to do this with me I think there's a couple of other people who are interested I think it just comes down to timing this one is probably more around the summer I say June or July time is when we kind of got this one planned but uh, again don't hold me to that because as you know, guys, TBRs can't fluctuate. And that's something I'm going to be working out because I'm going to be reading it with somebody. So I want to make sure that her schedule works out as well as mine does. But this is, a, like I said, this is always sold to me as the hidden gem of fantasy. And I'm very, very excited to do it because it's complete. I've heard that he sticks the landing incredibly well. So I'm excited to do it. I am very, very excited to do it. And it's got some of the best covers in all of fantasy and that does that does matter guys let's be honest here that does matter now i do plan uh, again this is another one i think that some people might count like um uh like the realm of the eldlings and that it is an individual series but i like that he does separate his mostly his trilogies there are a couple of quintets in there but i'm going to be continuing with legend of drist and this is the legacy of the drow i still have to finish icewind dale but i will be doing that and obviously this will be the new one that i start legacy of the drow i i love this world i think that these are just fun palette cleansers because they're not very much commitment and it's a really awesome world and a really awesome character in drist and of course guinevar i love those two i think that's just an awesome awesome duo and i can't wait to continue that world because i had a lot of fun with the beginning of icewind dale and the last two books and i just i kind of ran out of time in the holidays when i was reading these big huge robin hobb books and it kind of took all of my time but i will be continuing again with legend of drist next year and excited to do it guys you haven't tried drist because you've heard things or you assume things don't give it a shot yes not everything has to be reinventing the fantasy wheel sometimes it's fun to go back and remember why we love this genre and that's what i've said about the legend uh, legend of drist is i do feel like it is a throwback to when i just loved fantasy for what it was and i didn't need anyone to subvert my expectations or do something different sometimes it's fun just to remember hey this is why i fell in love with this genre in the first place and that's a great example of that now the last three here i don't i don't actually have them on physical i haven't actually have them on digital yet either i don't have them at all yet so that's why they're kind of last on this list because i still got to have time to get them uh first is i want to continue with robert mccammon and this is the matthew corbett series a lot of people in my discord are really really into the series and while it is a series they do say you can treat each one almost like a standalone they are kind of self-contained almost like a I don't know, like a, like a, I don't even know what it's about. I, I believe they're about pirates. I'm not sure because Robert McCammon's actually like dressed like a pirate in the picture, so I'm not sure. So I don't really know what it's about at all, but they've said it is very much almost like a, a monster of the week, case of the week, client of the week, that kind of thing. And uh, if it's not a monster book, I don't really know if you'd call it that. So I don't really know the, the world I look for. They're very self-contained, and uh, I, I've heard nothing but just immaculate things about them. So uh, after, you know, Swan Song and Boy's Life were absolute home runs for me, and, you know, the Wolf Sour was, ah. I said, you know what, maybe I need to kind of just change it up a little bit. Let's go through this series that these people are saying really, really great things about. And so that will probably be the next thing that I really dive into with Mr. McCammon, who I have really, really enjoyed so far. Next up, Blake Crouch, guys. I do want to get back in him. And he does have a series out there. It's called Andrew Z. Thomas and Luther Kite. I don't know a ton about it. I know it is, uh, what, four books? 
books. I actually think it's like six, but four of them are written by him, and his story does, you know, conclude the story. I think one is actually a prequel book, and he wrote like a trilogy, and just in that world, other writers have continued it. I'm not, don't quote me on this. This is what I believe to be true, but uh, I, I've loved everything I've read by Blake Crouch. I think Abandon was the only one that wasn't just like a smash hit for me, so uh, I'm excited with that batting average that he's doing right now. Like I said, I feel like he is the next Michael Crichton, which is an absolute amazing endorsement that I can give someone because that is my second favorite author of all time. And uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying his world that he's created and all the stuff that he talks about, all the topics he brings up, very much in that crichton -y way. Uh, crichton -y, you like that word? That way where he's like, you know, hey, this is stuff that really is possible, but should we be messing with it? It's always something that Crichton put forward in a way that made you think before you really said, hey, yeah, that means that would be great. That would end well. You know, this is why it might not end well. So I'm excited to continue with more Blake Crouch. And the next one, guys, now I have went on record numerous times that I thought Broken Empire was a big letdown for me. And I think it's kind of kept me away from reading more Mark Lawrence. And uh, I think that I'm finally ready to move on past that. And I'm ready to give Book of the Ancestor a try because that's another one of those that I don't think I've ever heard anyone say anything bad about it. And now, of course, everyone's always going to say, yeah, the first sentence is the best, the best first line ever in fantasy. Okay, cool. How about the rest of the series? But from what I have heard, I don't feel like there's very many people who have not really loved that series. And they've said... You don't have to read his universe in order. You can read each series on its own because I believe it takes place in the same universe, but there's not very much crossover. So you would be fine skipping uh, well, the Red Queen's War and going straight to Book of the Ancestors. So that's what I'm going to do because that's the one that I've heard the most interesting things about. You know, you got badass like assassin nuns. That sounds cool. You know, why not? Let's go for it. But uh, yeah, that's really everything that I'm saying is in Permanent Ink. I will be at least starting in 2023 so what just missed the cut what would you say was better luck next year because there's something people are going to ask me about and they just they just didn't make it because guys i i only read with my eyes i don't audio uh my job's getting more more busy my kids are becoming more and more responsibility and it's like do i gotta i, I i'm either gonna read more or i'm gonna make less videos you know i gotta make up my choice here so i'm still only the, about three or four books a month right now when they're you know when they're robin hobb size it's only about three books a month you know <laughs> so i would say anywhere between uh three to six books per month would be my maximum so i was kind of saying i don't want to overcommit. so these are some that you know hey they could still make it on there but not, they're not cutting in line before any of these. So Raven's Mark is a trilogy by Ed McDonald. Uh, Alan from Library of Alexandria really, really highly recommended this series to me. That's what first got on my radar. Uh, but uh, like I said, right now, I just don't have it in the plans. War for the Rose Throne is another one that was a tough cut. Peter uh, Peter Macklin, that was one I was really, really excited to get to. And just, it just a numbers game. That one, again, just has not actually rose to the top yet. So it's uh, complete. So I'm excited about that. And I would think that that would be one of the early ones. If I was able to push one of these into this list, that probably would have been the one. Prince of Nothing by R. Scott Baker. That again, guys, it's just I want to finish Malazan first. I am not committing to another super, super dense series again until I finish Malazan. And so that raises people usually being like, well, when are you going to finish Malazan? We'll talk about it in a second. Uh, Divine Cities Trilogy by Robert Jackson Bennett. Uh, I know that uh, Foundry side people have told me they didn't think I'd like that very much, but they do think that I'd like Divine Cities. So that's the one that I actually have all three of them of, and I am ready to uh, start those uh, when I can. So that would be the one that I would go with. Grail Quest by Bernard Cornwell. I really, really wanted to push that one into the year. It just didn't happen. Uh, they're doing a read-along on my Discord right now, and I won't lie, the lukewarm reception for it was one that kind of helped me decide to, okay, I can push that one down the line to a little bit later. And then Etherland by Tad Williams. This one was a very, very tough cut because I did begin this year by doing Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn. And I wanted to continue reading Tad Williams, but I said, instead of going right back to Ocean Art, I want to check out uh, Otherland and see how he does with something a little bit different. And uh, just, again, numbers game. I'm only one person and real life responsibilities are getting a little too much for me to commit to doing all of these things and then more. So, how about some series that uh, I'm just going to be continuing this year? Because there are some series I'm not going to be starting, but there are a few that I'm going to be continuing. Obviously, I want to continue with Drist. I've already touched on Realm of the Elderlings is one I plan to finish in 2023. I wouldn't mind getting back to the Witcher books because I know that I had it on my... 
when I, I did a video a while back about you know series that I won't finish and some I might but might not. And I had Witcher on there because I wasn't really sure. I feel like enough times went by now that I'm ready to give Time to Contempt another try. Because when I stopped reading it, I said I never really, I never really planned to quit the series. It just that, that book wasn't really hitting for me. So I, I think I'm ready to give it another try because I did like the first three books. I, I just, I just, I wasn't able to get into Time Contempt the way it started. And there was just some things, some red flags that came up that I said, I don't like where this is headed. So I said, take a break. And I just never went back to it. And so I'd like to fix that maybe sometime this year if I can. Uh, the big one, The Expanse. If you notice that this list doesn't have a ton of science fiction on it, it's because I want to prioritize The Expanse. Now I am getting back into the novellas and books three and four in December of this year. And then I'd like to just kind of sprinkle in a book or two every month until I can try to finish that series. Because the only reason I didn't uh, finish... Uh, reading it when it was coming out was because I didn't want to pass up the show. And then when the show passed the books, uh, I was like, or actually the show finished and the books, I was like, all right, uh, I need to finish the books now. And I no longer have that excuse. So I need to get back into that world because I do really love the world that Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank or James S.A. Corey, as they're known, have made. And I'm excited to go back and hang out with Holden and the Rosinante crew. It's going to be very, very exciting for me because I think that is going to end up being one of my favorite science fiction series of all time. And I don't think it's going to be particularly close. And then lastly, guys, Malazan. Yes, I would like to get back to it this year. I only have three books left. You don't make it that far in the series and then stop. At least I don't believe you do. I started reading Toll the Hounds uh, in the middle of the year. And I was just, I was not enjoying it. And I said, I want to, I want to take a break because if I force myself to finish this, I'm going to end up hate reading it. And I was like, I, you don't take a journey that huge to just feel like it's something you need to finish. So I wanted to make sure that I took that break. Like I said, I took a six month break with Wheel of Time guys, and it's you know a top 10 fantasy series all time for me. So now that I've taken about six, seven months away from Malazan, I feel like I could be ready to get back into it sometime in 2023. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna finish it, but I will definitely try in 2023. Just depends on how other things go. Like I said, we got some rereads, we got some read-alongs and things like that that I am going to let take priority but, uh, you know, Realm of the Elderlings is a big one for me to finish this year because, like I said, I have tied other people into that now. So that's going to keep, uh, that's obviously going to take my priority. I'd like to continue working my way through the multiverse. There are some rereads that I need to do for Stephen King because I haven't read them since I was, you know, a teenager in my early 20s. So I need to revisit those things. But, uh, yeah, these are the series that I've talked about that I want to start in 2023. And I'm excited about each and every one of them. I thought it was a really, really fun fun time last year making this list and I felt like I did start all of those th all those ones that I said were in permanent ink I don't think I started very many that I said you know hey maybe maybe if I have time but I did start all those ones that I said I was going to start and I didn't necessarily finish all of them like I know Codex Solera was a big big dropout for me but there are that is going to happen from time to time you're going to read some series and just decide they aren't for you so I don't DNF very many books but I will DNF a series so hopefully none of these ones I listed here will be DNF. But guys, do you have any plans for new series that you want to start in 2023? Why don't you let me know down below if you plan to start any, if you plan to start any of these. If you want to jump on board with me, I would love for you to do that. Join the Discord and we can have a grand old time. So thanks for watching guys and I will talk to you in the comments below.